Uh, welcome to the Open Active Community Group uh, meeting on the 24th of May 2023. Um, today, in terms of the agenda, uh, we are going to talk about uh, a quick update on the Data Quality Explorer from Howard. Uh, and then we're going to have a bit of an open discussion session. Um, and then we're going to have some AOB. Uh, just up front, does anyone have any items of uh, uh, any other business? If you do, if you want to just paste them in the chat, we can pick them up when we get to the relevant part. Uh, but on that note, Howard, I'll hand over to you to give a quick update on the Data Quality Explorer. Excellent. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. So the, the link uh, to the tool that we've been working on and, and have shared briefly, we'll put in the slides here. So that's available now. Um, so this is a tool. This is a tool in a temporary home. Say it's in a, um, a location on, we're running it on Heroku cloud and it's a fairly small um, component service, not so, um, but I don't imagine it will get too much traffic. Um, but if you if it is a little slow, that could be one reason. But uh, I'll show you through it. And I'll show you how through its intended use, I guess, uh, how we kind of envisage it might be used. But obviously, um, we're, we're looking for feedback. And if people intended it to be used in other ways, then then let us know, and we can we can explore that. So I'm going to try and show. That's the one. How does that look? Can you see the, the screen now? I I can't see, I can only see um see the screen over here. So we're still we'll seeing the agenda, Howard, I'm afraid. Uh, I am screen sharing, stop share. So do you need to stop sharing or that's possibly a good call? I'll try that. Or are you um am I is it highlighted? You can participants can now see my application apparently. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, quick recap. Uh, it's based on the data visualizer that we inherited from Open Referral, and Nick uh, did some work to make that open, active, friendly, uh, or relevant. And we just took that as a as a convenient base um, to take the visualization a little bit further and bring in some of the data quality measurements that we've been looking at. Um, so I'll just run through a kind of typical approach to it. So there's maybe five or six steps, I think. So if you're a data publisher and you want to check in on, on the quality of your data, that's kind of the, the main intended use. So here we have Hopefully you can see now the drop down appeared um, the the data publishers and these are taken from the data set site pages that accompany uh, an open active feed. So I'm just going to start with this top one. So once you select that, it will populate this box and you'll see the available feed types for that um, publisher. So you can choose one of those. And then the next obvious thing, hopefully, is that you click the big green button and it will go and do stuff. And it shows you what's happening over here. Live demo, of course. So it's, oh, it is there. So it shows you that here's the, the actual feed. Um, and that's useful to see. And so it's worth checking in and reading through this stuff to understand what's going on. So we've chosen session series and it's gone away and pulled the session series feed. And if I click on that, that's what that looks like. And when my uh, kind of viewer kicks in, that's that's the actual live feed. And of course, the top line is the next page. So it's gone away and read all the pages and returned all the information in the JSON. And that took 10 seconds. So this is a relatively small one. Um, because session series and scheduled sessions are related, and in Activity Finders, uh, you ideally need information for both feeds to, to present to, to users. Uh, so it goes away and reads the scheduled session feed. 
And again, there's a link there so you can check in on that. Um, and that, again, completed in, in uh, 13 seconds or so. Now it's combining the, the items. And if you notice, we've got 2,823 items scheduled sessions, but it's only working here on 2,420. And so what it's done is match between the feeds. And if it can't find a match, that might mean we've got a series that has no actual sessions attached to it, or we've got scheduled sessions that don't have a related series, so we, we don't know what activity they are, we don't know where they are, things like that, then those are kind of dropped. So it's combined the feeds and it's come up with 2,420, and then it runs through the data quality measures that we discussed over time. So recap there, choose a feed provider, choose a feed, click execute, read the bump, and then once it's completed that, it calculates these scores and gives you a view onto the data. Previously, it was showing you all the individual API calls that were, um, that were made, and they're still visible. You can see those there. Blue is the first feed that you've chosen, and the gray is any related feed that it's brought in. Get back to the results. Um, so these were our headline kind of measures. So here we've got um, whether or not it's got a valid activity ID and whether it's got a postcode or a geospatial coordinates that allow it to be mapped. If it's got a date in the future, a valid start date, um, and if it's got a URL that takes you directly to the to a page for that slot. Um, so, and we've also added these filters underneath now. So if we say, okay, well, let's have a look at these records that don't have valid postcode. Um, I click on that and it goes away and now shows me just the records that don't have a valid postcode. But, and they're called home classes, so that might be a clue. Um, from then, I can actually look at the the JSON, the raw data that's being shared for those activities. And I click on that button here. I don't know if you can see it, JSON over here. And it shows me the information that it's returned from either feed that relates to, to that record. Um, and looking over here in the location, sure enough, there's no, um, there is no geospatial coordinates or postcodes. Um, so how that relates to a home class is, is something to be, I need to explore. Um, but from each of those things, so now you can see that you've got the, um, the raw data that's being shared. And so you might be able to hone in on, on why it's failing some of these checks. Uh, and you can send that a raw JSON to the validator, which is opened up in another screen, unfortunately. So how, how can I... Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> a live demo. Um, one second. Mark, you have to try, drag the, t the Chrome tab that I opened in the new window into this window, and then we can see it. It it opened not in Chrome, I think, but in um, oh, oh, right. the default thing. So what I can do is simulate that so we can edit this out and it looks like the magic. But if I paste that in there, can you see now the validate? Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So we'll try that again. Um, so you can click straight away from here, click the validate button, and it takes you to the open active validator and it sends that relevant um, JSON. And so you get some the messages here so we have some warnings and some tips in this one but not um no errors um and if i did the same for the other one lost me tabs there one second
here we do get some merits um, and some warnings and some tips. So you can go through that process to um, to kind of hone in on the records that are failing the data quality checks using the uh, these filters, and you can explore it visually, but you can also send it to the validator. So the hope is that this provides some tools to um, to hone in on the kinds of issues that have been reported, um, you know, and that we've discussed over the last few months as to how we can kind of improve the the uh, the end user experience in the activity yeah. behind it. So, um, and if we can knock the filters off, so there are a couple of things still on the to-do list, but I think certainly the tool in, in that context is um, is usable. I, I'll show you another one. Uh, so. I'm trying to find um, trying to find one that just had yeah some some fields don't have session series and scheduled session um, they have either embedded super events which contain the series data and that might be the year uh, or they have embedded sub events which have the individual sessions which is the case here um, so and it should handle handle those different scenarios it's gone away to read the feed so this could be a bigger one it could take a bit longer um, so there's a little more warning pops up there this is what I was hoping to see so um, what's happened is the server serving the data has kind of forbidden that um, request the API request so if you check in your data feed and you find that's happening a lot, then it might be worth exploring that. Um, obviously, the um, data consumers are hoping to be able to pull these pull this data um, consistently and regularly to keep their kind of schedules up to date and the booking systems up to date. So, um, if you're seeing a lot of problems there, that might be something to explore. Um, yeah, I suppose so that that didn't take too long, just over a minute for a reasonable one. But I do know, and there you might have experienced this if you if you something like an everyone active feed, I won't kick it off now because it, it will take probably ten minutes to go away and read the relevant feeds and then to combine all those records together and then to go back and measure the data quality. So it takes a little while um, on, on the bigger feeds. I'll show one more because what we haven't seen is, if you do have um, valid activity IDs, then you get a, a chart here that shows that they're in use. Um, and before, before you ask, because I know someone will ask, there were some filters previously, um, and we're just in the process of restoring some of those. So, for example, if I go, this is the local version, which will be, which will be pushed out there soon. Um, so I could hone in on a particular exercise, and so if I if I wanted to check, you know, data quality per, for a different activity type, and we're exploring. A filtering by organization as well. Um, so that's the next step. I think I'll stop there. I think uh, that's the main elements. That, that's sorry, Howard. Sorry. Howard, Howard, sorry. Apologies for the, the background noise. Go for it. Sorry. Go for it. I was just going to ask a question. I'm, I'm, I'm loading up the Everyone Active Feed in a minute. I know it's lengthy. I'm noticing the URL though, it's referring to the test account not the live account is that intentional no thank you Andy. so um what i did want to ask uh, so if i go to everyone active here and i am um, i don't i didn't put the uh i didn't put the link in there but it's dq slash uh, dq dash explorer dot heroku app dot com um you can maybe see it in the, in the top there 
So if we go to F1 Active, I lost my mouse, we get in basically three sets of feeds. And that's because in the data catalogs, there are three sets, three entries with F1 Active. Um, so the top one, I can't, I'll kick it off, but we, can, we, we won't wait for it to load, but it'll show you here where it's going, hopefully. Open data, Ledger Cloud, everyone active. Okay, that's fine. If I uh, stop that and go to this one. I might have to clear that, actually. Well, yeah, I think I've had this question um, from uh, Chris this week about um, the fact that we've got three feeds. So one's live, one's dev, and one's UAT, um, and asking if we can turn them off. Um, honestly, no, we don't want to turn them off because we use those, de those dev ones for updates, developments, and everything like that. So we need to be able to test these things. Um, so whilst Andy's doing work for us on feeds, making changes, liaising with Nick, et cetera, making changes, we need to be able to test those feeds. So we don't want to turn them off. That understood. Do they Should they be live in the data catalogs for, for data consumers? Do they contain different... Um, you know, valid activities that should appear in activity finders. That's, I guess, the next question. They would contain different activities. It's not a direct copy of the live instance of our database. Um, it will be out of date as such because um, we only copy that every so often from one database to another. Um, but they'd only contain something that was completely different, like if we were introducing something new to the business. Okay, well, that kind of answers the question. Um, this is a, it's probably Andrew. a separate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, so I guess my question was follow a follow on. As part of your testing, do those feeds need to be registered as part of the data catalog centrally with Open Active, or could they just sit in the background as as kind of unregistered feeds and just have your live one registered separately with with the data catalog? I wouldn't know how to answer that because I don't know the difference between being registered and not being registered and what the limitations are with not being registered. Um, maybe Nick or Andy are best advised. I don't know. We've just set this up as we've been advised and it's being used from a development perspective. Okay. I can, um, yeah, I could, I could answer that. The, um, it, the, there was an assumption when OWS was built that either uh, OWS would be in live mode or in UAT mode. In live mode, it gets a proxy in front of it that Make, make sure that traffic can't get um, any load on the, the, the feeds, won't get passed through to the, uh, the AWS instance. Mm -hmm. In UAT mode, that proxy is disabled. Um, so everyone active for, for good reasons have got it enabled for both UAT and live, um, which is the, why it's in the data catalog. Um, and so this is a question I suppose, well, this is something that, that, I mean, Andy, we could pick up actually if it was of interest, which is basically creating another proxy internally in Gladstone, because I know you've got, you've at the moment got one proxy instance here. You could feasibly create a test one, and then you could point uh, the stuff that the, the UAT and the test environments of everyone active could pointing to the test proxy, and that would have a different data catalog, and that would then be a way of separating um, the, the stuff so that the, we don't end up with all the test data in here uh, mixed in with the live yeah. data. That's a possible route yeah, forward. That, that, that's probably a conversation that you, myself, and uh, our infrastructure need to consider with regards to how it's deployed in the central uh, Azure platform at the moment. Yeah, yeah happy to pick that up at any point. Okay, cool. And, and uh, I think, so what I'm showing on the screen, just briefly, is the, the kind of um, the list of feeds. So you might be familiar with the status page as well. Um, and this is drawn from, from the data catalog, um, which goes off to various other data catalogs. Individual organizations have their own. And there's also a list of single, single feeds. Um, so all of those can be drawn together into one list, which is what we use to populate the, um, the Data Quality Explorer and the, the status page. Uh, basically, what, that's the kind of where data publishers might start their journey in gathering 
open active data in. And what we're saying, uh, Debbie, is that if they do that, then they'll go and try and fetch all that data from those UAT and the other um, feeds and then have to process it. And as you say, it might be old data. Um, so it, it might not be of use. So if we can, I guess we want this, that start point for the, um, for the data consumers just to have the stuff that should find its way into into an activity finder, you know, and, and people can use it, then it just re will reduce the burden on trying to read and process that data. I think that's what I'm trying to say, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Um, we just need to find that middle ground, I think, of, of us being able to use it, but uh, a user not being able to access it because we need to be able to access it. So, of course. Uh, yeah, conversation can be had with Gladstone and um, maybe Nick's expertise then. Yeah. I think what's really yeah. I think what's really interesting me here is that the, the 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 data quality explorer is already starting to stimulate discussions about data quality and how we can improve the data quality. And um, you know, I, I think the tool has developed quite significantly since we looked at it in the meeting at the end of April. I think quite a lot of work's gone into it over the the past month. It's looking much better and and yeah the next step is that chris is going to start talking to uh data providers about the tool uh testing it with their data gathering feedback and then i think we'll enter a kind of process of continual improvement for the tool but it's really i think it's really good that this is already stimulating discussions about issues in data which is what the the intention was so so i think that's really great thank you howard when we looked at it, our concern was that the URLs were all 0%. Um, we know that we've done some work specifically around this in the last two weeks with Andy and Nick's help. Yeah. So yeah, I was just, just, yeah, just going to raise that. Yeah. It doesn't feel accurate um, unless um, all of those results are considering the slots URL, which I think is the one that's not populated. But a facility URL would be populated and a series URL would be populated, but not a slot one. I think yeah, that's. So I, think that was, that, that was a bit, I was sorry, Howard. I think I was, I was going to ask because it looks like you're looking to do some sort of cross um, analysis between the feeds as well. So if you're looking, let's say, at the session series, sorry, if you look at the uh, scheduled sessions where we've got a URL in there now, we haven't uh, populated that within the scheduled sessions. And likewise, facility use, we've got the URL, but we don't have it in the slots. And we were working with Nick on that. Now, if there's a reliance on that, that might be why we're not seeing uh, any percentage increase. Okay. I'm just concerned that from a, a business perspective, for me, if I was to give this to, you know, the directors of the business, um, that would immediately come back to me to say why. And yep. um, it's quite difficult to explain um, okay. that it exists. We have done the work. It exists to a level. It just doesn't exist to that lowest possible level. So I'm just not sure whether it's accurate oh, I don't that accurate maybe not the right word but if you know what I mean that's that's yeah. my concern with it yeah yeah so let, let's have a chat about how that's defined and that measure so um it is it was a proxy measure for I would say that a really good example but um of how in an activity finder you can choose an activity you maybe find it on the map you go to um you click on it whatever it tells you the dates and the times and you can find a session that you want, and then you can click that session, and it takes you straight away to the activity provider, and you don't have to start again. Basically, you are you're at that activity, that date, that time, that session, the price or whatever you've you've already seen, and that is that seamless find and book kind of use case that that we're working towards. That is, I guess, the highest standard um and so i can see what you're saying you maybe we'll find some in here now so if i put uh well i don't put build one because it's not percent so they're all going to come back but uh so if we look at one of these at the session series I'm, I'm also by the way i i pressed the test one so it might not be the right one to look at but so you're saying now that at the series level um there will be a url no, um, not the series level. No, we did. We've got it in the scheduled session. Okay. The series session. 
if I remember rightly. Is that right, Nick? I can't remember now. I think there's so many. I think it's the other way around, sir. I think it is this. It is you the are series. right. Yeah, we did the course incidents. Yeah, we done the session series, and we've okay. done the facility uses. Okay, which which is a a good step forward. You know, I, I, I you can see because someone now in Activity Finder is going to go, they go, and it tells me the the sessions. Uh, sorry, the series. So they may they're going spinning at a certain place, but now. They might have to start again with the date and the time and choose a slot. So they're not right back to the start. They doesn't just take them to the the leisure center website where they have to then go and find things. But that's because let's say there are for each session series there are twenty sessions. Um, what we've counted is the unique URL. So for those twenty sessions, it will have mapped across the URL from over here. And uh, you know, applied it to that session in this in this in these summary, but it's not a unique URL, and so that record hasn't really counted towards the. So for this way, then what you're saying is we would need to go down to the detail level to see if the percentage increase. So. Yeah, and I wish I could find one. Uh, think of one off the top of my head. Uh, um, I mean, it's kind of, it is disappointing because, um, I mean, we've been targeted to look at this specifically for Manchester Active. And if you now go through the MCR Active website as it currently stands, the work that we've done means that the user does end up in our booking platform for that session. Um, it's just not that exact time. But when that comes to classes, the time is really irrelevant anyway, because the class is a unique session that takes place every Friday. Um, and so that the experience, the user, the user's not impacted by that. Then that, that, that is really interesting. Um, and perhaps if I was reporting unique URLs at session level, at series level rather, I, this kind of series level rather than over here at sessions, I'm, I'm, I'm moving from the blue end to the pink end with my mouse. Um, then that would be a higher percentage. Um, and we've shown over here that you can show more than one measure. So we could, so for example, 100% of these have got a name, 100% have got a description, it's 95.6% have got a matching ID. So that that's, you know, high. Um, so maybe we could do like a double concentric there and measure it at both levels, which, which gives, recognizes that work um and and the the experience that you're now providing uh but it recognizes that there's also that extra step which can take people directly to the time slot yeah um, that would certainly assist with regard to the metrics sorry that would certainly that, that certainly would be stepping in the right direction with regard to the two forms of metrics yeah um so i can i can certainly explore that i think you know and the, the idea here is is to get Things moving in the right direction. It's you know it, it is um, so we do want to recognise that the work has been been done. So I'll explore that. that that's that's good feedback. Um, I wish I could find think of one that has has the URLs as, as a good example. But um, so some of these take take some time. You know, uh, particularly if it's a big feed, it can take ten minutes. We've seen a few that were pretty quick. Um, are there something? I think um, Gwen would be one you could use, Howard, if you wanted. I'm really you sorry, know, I have to drop know. off because I have to do the school run today. There's just one thing that I just wasn't sure about, if I can just before I go, is the, the, the terminology activity ID in the first okay. um, uh, column. I guess activity ID is something that operators are used to in their own world. Um, and activity ID is unique to a class um, and to a facility. Whereas I think what that's referring to is how many of them are associated to an event? Am I right? Uh, no, I'm trying to find one, but I'm okay. uh, not a good one. So um, how can I do this? Uh, if I go over here, perhaps, because I can fill it on. We know this has got a matching activity because I've filled it on it. Um, so if I look at the JSON for one of these, we should see. Um, We should see among, there it is. 
So where we have an activity, and this is the kind of the open active way of linking it to, to the activity list, the official list, uh, so they can be consistently picked up by, um, by different activity providers. So in here we have activity, which has a type and it's a concept because it's a vocabulary and it has an ID. And that specific ID is what we're using to match um, to the official activity list. So that's what yeah, that means, that, activity ID. Yeah, and I think that's what Debbie's highlighting is that that means something in, in the open active world, but that's a completely different phrase within the actual operation and the way that the users refer okay. to an activity. Uh, maybe I should expand that with valid open active activity ID or something like that to, to kind of... Or is it? Is... Because that's more around your groupings, if that makes sense, your activity. Which is an event in our world, isn't it, Andy? I believe it is, yeah. Event hmm. series ID, yeah. Yeah, we can look at the wording for that. I will, yeah, I'll explore how we can make make that more explicit about what we're, we're talking about. We're talking about um, that you, a session series should have uh, that activity information included. Um, that's open active language. I'll try and work out a way of, uh, of, of being explicit about that. Okay. Sorry in to the, be a pain. <laughs> in the oh, we want it. We want it to kind of make sense with people in the front line. Remember, you know, the, uh, that's that's the idea. Okay. Uh, I need to jump off. So later, apologies. Please. I'll see to you, speak to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, bye. Bye. For some reason, I can't see Bookwen, um, and I think I know why. No, I it's, just checked. Um, Bookwen is four hundred four of their data set site, so it'd be good to. Pick that up. <laughs> okay. If someone there uh, is in touch with. Them. Yeah, that's interesting. It hasn't been hasn't been picked up there. So, um, yeah. So, just we have we are focusing on these types of feeds. So, events. The event is not. I, I, I'll be adding those back in, and course instances have also been pulled at the moment. Just wanted to get this displaying properly, and this covers the bulk of the um, the feeds. So uh, we will be adding those back in shortly. And that's me. I'll, I'll stop sharing now. Thanks, Howard. That's Thanks, Howard. That was really good. Thank you very much. Um